Chip, it's been a, a hugely successful six and a half year tenure for Green, who's been kind enough to join us tonight on NRL 360. Paul, welcome to the show. Not the way you wanted to finish, I'm, I'm sure, but you did achieve a, a lot in your time at the Cowboys. How do you reconcile the events of the past week? Um, oh, it's been a pretty tough week, to be honest. Um, I sort of started the conversation about it last Wednesday. Um, wasn't really sure uh, how the year was going to finish. It, it was um, suggested that perhaps I should finish the year as coach. Um, but once we sort of, well, once I had a chance to think about it, I didn't, didn't really think that was a, a good way forward for both parties. And although I was determined to um, to coach the team on Sunday, uh, we, we at the end of the day, we felt it was probably best that we pull up stumps today. So. Green, can you just ex explain us in a little bit more detail why today? Why not get through the rest of the season? Like, why was it so important to, to finish up today? Oh, I, I just felt that, that it, there's always already been a fair bit of conjecture and noise around my position. Um, so whenever um, the team doesn't play well, um, the first thing that gets thrown up is, you know, whether or not I should continue as coach. And I just think, given the squad we have, uh, it's a fairly young squad, I just think, um, I don't think that would be helpful um, with all that that sort of commentary and noise going on around the uh, periphery. So I, I felt it was best um, to, to take myself out of it and, and allow the club to move forward with some clear air and focus on uh, the squad that they have and, and what they want to do with it going forward. One thing we do know about you is that you're a fighter and I'm wondering why you didn't want to fight your way out of this predicament. Um... The decision was made to go in a different direction next year. Uh, I, I definitely um, am a fighter and, and I'm certainly not a quitter. Um, I would have been happy to, to continue, but I just honestly in my heart, I, did, I just didn't feel it was the right thing to do for the club and the team. I think um, the less distractions this team has, the better off they'll be. And if it's not going to be me get, um, taking them forward and navigating them through this period, then um, I think what was best was to, to clear, the, clear the air, so to speak, and, and take uh, any sort of talk or conjecture or noise um, or rumblings that potentially may happen if we have a loss or if we have a bad loss. You know, there's, uh, there's always, you know, the players aren't happy or, the, you know, that, that sort of conversation starts when teams aren't performing consistently well. So I just wanted to take that off the table and I think that was the best way to do it if I just stepped down immediately. Greeny, I spoke to you this afternoon about talk. We've heard on a number of occasions that you've had a few problems with some senior players up there that's not all that rosy. And I know you don't want to give it oxygen, but I think it's one you could probably clear up because you told me a nice story about Michael Morgan and talking to him today. And what was your relationship really like with those senior players? Yeah, it was good. Um, you know, it was honest, and I think um, that's always going to happen. If you want to uh, move forward, particularly from a leadership point of view, you have to be able to have honest conversations. Uh, I just think sometimes those conversations may have gotten out and were um, spun a certain way. Uh, and then that's another example. I mean, there was a story in the paper on the weekend about Morgo and I, and um, again, that's an example of what I'm, I'm trying to avoid for the team. And, and by taking myself out of the picture, for the rest of this year, you know, those sorts of stories go away. Uh, but I can guarantee you that there, there is no dramas. Um, you know, uh, Josh McGuire came out a couple of weeks ago and spoke fairly honestly about players taking accountability. Um, I, I never shot away from um, my responsibility and all that. So, you know, I've got a, a good relationship with all the players and still do. You know, it was a tough day to say goodbye to all of those guys. Um, and uh, I all caught up with them one-on-one. -on -one. Once I made um, the announcement to the playing group, I spent time with each, each and every one of them. And you know, some of those conversations were fairly emotional and um, it was uh, a tough day. But as I said, I can, I can guarantee that my relationship with the players is still strong. Greeny, you touched on the conjecture and the outside noise moments ago. Why do you think that that narrative just continued to raise its head and persist? Well, I think because we, we just have had a couple of years back to back where we haven't played well. Um, we, there's been enormous expectation on us, and, and rightly so. Um, you know, I'm not, I'd, I'd want expectation on any team that I'm coaching and in going into a season. Um, we hadn't 
performed up to people's expectations. So straight away, people want to know why why that's happening. Um, you know, I was pretty clear on why it wasn't happening, but um, sometimes not everyone else uh, believes that and they try to look for other reasons. So we, we, we know the last couple of years have been a struggle. Uh, if you could go back and have that two years over, what would you do different? Um, I think uh, some of the stuff that happened was out of our control. I'd certainly probably um, put, put a little bit more time into uh, making sure um, the, the staff dynamic was right and making sure that that was operating well. Uh, I'm not saying that was an issue, but I think it's probably an area we could have done better. Um, certainly around injuries in particular, that hasn't been a, um, helpful for us. And that's one of the biggest areas, I reckon, that's just hasn't allowed us to have that consistency on the field. When and how did the players find out, Greeny, specifically, did they know before yesterday's game against Penrith? No, they didn't. We called a meeting today at 11 o'clock and, and they were told as a group, I caught up with the leadership group just prior to that. Uh, and that's when, when I told them. Greeny, would you like to coach the Broncos? We know there's a lot of drama <laughs> down there and talk about Anthony Seabold. Would you be in the running if that uh, job became available? Look, today is not a great day to be asking me about uh, future coaching options. I did say in my press conference today, though, that um, uh, my future as the coach of the Cowboys is finished, but my future as a head coach hasn't finished. I have still have aspirations and goals that I will achieve as a head coach. Um, so where that might be, um, I'm not sure. Well, what did you learn in your six and a half years at the Cowboys that's most important to get right as an NRL head coach? Um, that there are a lot of things that go into having a successful season. Uh, and it's really important that you're making sure that you're putting time into all of those areas. And, um, you know, communication is a key thing to that. Um, and I think at different times, um, you know, I, I probably could have been a little bit more aware of, of instead of pushing harder, probably um, just working harder on making sure everyone's playing their part. All right, last question. How will you remember your time in North Queensland? Um, with fond memories. Um, you know, I spent seven seasons here and we had a lot of um, good memories. Uh, as I mentioned, a couple of grand finals. We won a premiership, World Club Challenge, a couple of nines titles. Um, I was lucky enough individually, three guys won Dalian medals during that period. So there's a lot of good memories uh, on the field. Um, off the field, also seeing people develop, uh, in particular when you give young guys debuts and seeing them grow and I've you know um, witnessed guys that have come to the club as as boys and grown into men and become fathers and husbands and um, you know they're the most rewarding parts about the job and uh, I think also for the community up here I think um, they love their rugby league and we're in the, the club's in a really strong position now we, we've got a good crop of young players coming through uh, we've got world-class facilities in a new stadium and soon to be finished center of excellence um, so I think, um, you know, we, we're, we're well placed. Well, the club are well placed. I shouldn't say we're well placed <laughs> anymore. Yeah, well said. Well, Paul Green, congrats on 